So I've got a kit from uh, Stephen Vickers off eBay. Uh, about a week or so ago. Uh, and it's for testing. 4116 and 4164 RAM chips. These are commonly used in the um, Spectrum. 4116 chips are, and 4164s are commonly used in the Commodore 64. So, uh, 20 quid uh, for the kit. I think it's about 21 quid for the kit plus postage, and add another three or four quid, five quid, I think it was, for uh, an assembled version. I thought I'd go for the kit version, give me something to do. Uh, it comes with this rather tidy breadboard. Uh, instructions, always helpful. Um, a bag of components and uh, an Arduino pre programmed. Let's build. So I get the soldier on up to temperature and let's look at the destruction. So, the first thing we need to do is solder the Arduino Nano in place. USB port at the top, long pins at the out at the bottom of the PCB as you can cut these down after soldering in place. So let's get the Arduino out. Get that soldered up first. Probably be quite a few cuts in this video and fast forwards as I don't think we need that. There's no need to add the six pin block as it's not used. I'll keep that as a spare, they always come in handy. And he's saying the long pins out of the bottom. That's fine. Apart from the fact. How do these work now? There we go. Oh, I see. It's actually got a little bit like the STM32, isn't it? Is that the right way around? That's the right way around. Um, just get my magnifying glass headset out. Uh, these are an absolute godsend uh, if your eyesight is not as sharp as it used to be. Um, I wear mine with a strap because I've got hearing aids, but they do come with spectacle type arms as well. And a rather handy little LED light there. So uh, let's. Uh, Come on, just gives me a little bit more of a, give me a fancying chance of actually working out the best way to do this. I think I'm just going to go for it. I tend to, okay, I can use this just to hold the pins in place, I guess, whilst I do it, just to make sure that everything's aligned properly. Should really stream this, shouldn't I? I don't think anybody would watch. So let's just. I'm probably doing this the awkward way on, so I can just put those in there like that. Do it all in one go. So, uh, I reckon if I sold those in first, I'll just sold that on top. It'll hold everything nice and steady and straight. There we go. Soldering irons up to temperature. Nice, nice, nice. Let's just tin and clean it because it's not been used for a while. So there we go. Using leaded solder 6040. Can't stand this on un leaded nonsense. It's not as if I'm selling it to anybody. Uh, let's just do that again. I just be on the safe side. There we go. This will be a bit of a mumble session as I do this. Uh, those of you that watch my videos will be used to this. Right, so. Let's do top left. I'll have to get some, uh, yeah, there we go, sorted it. It's quite a lot of discussion on uh, Facebook groups about this particular kit. 
and uh, ones like it by Stephen. Um, I think he started off doing a 4116 um, tester. The problem with 4116 run chips is that they've got three volts. Um, there's a 12 volt, there's a is it 5 volt and minus 5 volt? So the and spectrums they're prone to just going when the um, DC to DT, DC converter circuit goes near where the coil is near the power supply end, um, usually caused by one of the transistors popping or some fault in the circuit. And if you lose the 12 volt line and the minus 5 volt line, uh, the chips can quite quickly get themselves into a non-working state. Um, so what he's done with this board is provided the three voltages using a I think there's a there's a couple of um, I'll go through it later. There are a couple of voltage regulators and there's a there's a voltage DC voltage inverter chip on here somewhere. I think the idea behind this is you put the 4116 chips in this one to test and the 41614 chips in this one to test. Yes, that's right, isn't it? There you go. 4164, 4116 and press the appropriate button. And it'll flash up an LED to tell you where it's working. We've got to give it nine volts, and um, so let's get the rest of the nano soldered. So it's a uh, USB up at the top. That's nice and straight. I like that. Let's do the bottom bin now. It's a bit more straightforward now. I've got that soldered in. Basically, it looks nice and straight. Not warped in any way, shape, or form. That's looking lovely. Yep, let's get the rest of this soldered in then. How oh, hot's that again? See, that's stone cold. The circuit board's taking a lot of the heat away from the chip, which is quite good. I guess. I'm no expert on this. Yeah, so the SMD soldering, that's something I'm not particularly good at, to be honest. My eyes aren't as keen as it used to be. Um, so that'll be fun. Um, I think the resistors go. Uh, there's two here. See the pads there the top between the tape markings and there's two uh, go here uh, we'll cross that bridge worst case scenario is I'll mess it up get somebody with better eyesight to do it for me <laughs> no I'm joking I'll be fine and that's done there we go so what's next in the destructions Solder the small yellow ceramic capacitor near the nano. Okay. Let's open the kit of parts up to find out what we've got. We have Three, three, four. Where is my three, three, four? Those are the same. That's good. Ah, uh, better not lose those fellas there. Those are the resistors. Oh my, they look tiny. Not that I'm intimidated at all by their size. <laughs> so we've got. Three electroly four electrolytic capacitors. Two identical three three four uh, capacitors. So three three four is that three hundred and thirty nanofarad? I think it is, isn't it? 
Uh, so that goes. goes in front of that piece of transistor. Let's put that fellow in there then. Doo -doo -doo. Sweet. And bend the pin. As you all know, I'm a snip before soldering usually kind of guy. So let's do that now. Makes it a little bit easier to solder, I find. Actual mileage may vary. Uh, 21 minutes recorded time already. Blimey. Right, soldering iron. You never use water. Uh, I'm cleaning the soldering iron using one of those kind of gold wire wool things. Rarely use water. I don't think it's very good for the tips, to be honest. Don't quote me on that. So let's get this one soldered in. Okay, that's good. I always like to have the numbs facing me so we can see what's going on if I ever have to debug it at some point in the future. Uh, there we go. Looking good. And what's next then? The L79 LO5 minus 5 volt regulator next to yellow ceramic capacitor, flat side facing towards the left of the PCB. This is where the magnifying headset comes in handy, working out what the components are. So that is a L7, something like that's not the one anyway. Pretty sure it isn't. This looks more like it. 79L05, L79, L05, so that's that. So what's this other one then? I bet this is the L78, L12, 12 volt regulator. I reckon that's this one here. Let's just double check that. L7, I think it looks like an 8. L12, yes, that's the L78, L12. This is definitely the L79, L05. So that goes next to the yellow ceramic capacitor. I like the instructions. Very clearly labelled. I only actually asked whether it had instructions. Because it was a little bit unclear which way the uh, LEDs went. But if you're a complete amateur and you don't know anything about electronics, well, you probably need to know a little bit about electronics if you're building this, but if you weren't too sure about soldering, it'd be worthwhile getting this kit, I think. So this, let's double check, he's got me doubting again now. That's the 79L05, there you go, that fellow there. 79L05, looks like a transistor. Next to the yellow ceramic capacitor, side facing to the left of the board. So let's bend the pins out slightly. I'm doing this while Mrs. B is watching Strictly Come Dancing. Uh, not really my cup of tea, really. Oh, Bill, 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 Bill Bailey's on it, and he's actually doing a fantastic job. Big fan of Bill Bailey. Uh, so I've, I've tolerated Strictly a couple of times to watch him. Uh, do the fun go. L05. That fella goes in here, flat side facing that way. In you go. Uh, does that look straight? I do like my boards to look aesthetically pleasing. There's no point just throwing the components on the board. It's the OCD in me, I think. So let's just bend these out a little bit. Oh, 
Bend that one that way, that one that way. Make sure it's straight. Yeah, that'll do. Snip the pins again. Uh, oh, that was a bit close. No, you took too much off that one. It's worth investing in a good set of side cutters. I've got these, I didn't pay much for these. I think they cost me about, I don't know, not much more than a tenner off eBay. There we go. Let's bend that a little bit more. That's straight, yep, that will do. That will do, pig, that will do. Let's get this fella soldered in now then. See what I mean about soldering and the pins are cut. So that's flowed through a little bit to the other side there, you see. It sometimes happens with narrower components. I'm not too worried about that. That's to be expected, I think, through hole soldering these days. Let's just trim these a little bit. Happy with that. There. So that's the 79L05 in. What's next? I sold two of the three 10 UF capacitors above and below the L7905 regulator. It's not with these fellas here, won't it? 10 UF, there you go. So we're on the electrolytics now. These are polarised. Okay. And I've done this before, I'm sure. You can see there's a big tell on electrolytics. You've got a stripe of a minus on it, uh, and the leg is shorter. So you've got two tells. Obviously, once you've got the component soldered in the board, then You've got no way of knowing which is the shorter leg or the, the, the negative leg. Uh, but then you can always look at the can and go, OK, that's negative. It's got a stripe, it's got a minus on it. So which way is this going then? Uh, positive legs facing towards the bottom of PCB, which does match the photographs. So the tell here then is negative. He's got the white. Uh, marking on the PCB mask there. So positive. Legs facing towards the bottom of PCB. And negative legs near the top of the PCB. So that's easy enough to do, isn't it? It's poke. 10 UF. Double check. 10 UF. There we are. And in you go. Come on. You can do this. Bend the legs. Yep. And snip. And solder. And lava, rinse and repeat. One. Two. Just double check. Negative pin towards the top. Uh, hopefully gravity will be my friend here. Hold this. Is that going to just be held in by? It is. It's going to be held in by the weight of the board. That's good. Oh. <sighs> 
one down. That's looking good. That's looking very tidy. Negative towards the top. And get another 10 UF. And just double check. No two flags near the top. 10 UF. There we go. Bend. There's a very good cartoon um, which explains how to do soldering. I'll put a link on the YouTube video. I've linked people to it before. And it basically demystifies soldering. There you go, it's nice and straight there. And gives you some good pointers. One, two, that joint. Let's reflow that. Uh, there. I think that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. It's just because it's got a square um, a pad. It just looked like it had flowed a bit too far. So you can see there's two kinds of pads on here. Uh, there's circular ones and the square ones. Square ones usually indicate a special pin, pin one or whatever. Okay, so that's the two electrolytics. That's looking pretty straight. I like that. Whichever way you look at it, that's looking pretty tidy. So what's next in his destructions? <sighs> diodes, diodes. D1 and D2. That'll be these fellas here. Stripes towards the left of the PCB. So what value are these then? Four O O ones, is that? LN four double O ones. Sounds plausible. Let's get these diodes in then. Do, do, do. I've got another. I think Mrs. B will be wanting to uh, hop onto Str uh, off Strictly at some point and back on the computer. So I may have to resume this another day. I uh, say the diodes go towards the left of the PCB. And you can see on the PCB itself, he's got the markings marked anyway. You can see where the stripe is. That's fairly straightforward. I've got this great tool. It's a former for components. It just takes... Make sure you can get the legs bent nice and straight. So let's just double check this isn't too wide for the hissages, yes, isn't it? Okay, so scratch that. I'm going to have to just bend them manually, I guess. Uh, yeah, let's bend them manually. The form is normally a really good tool for this kind of thing, but not this time. Let's bend this one manually. That's perfect in fact, isn't it? So strike towards the left. There we go. Uh, same for D1. It's a very easy board to assemble this. I've got these two. It's not sold to these by the way, they're just taped on to stop them falling out, I think. The drawing uh, delivery. So there we go, another diode. I see the stripe there just about. I'll cut the pins on this one first. So stripe towards the left. Mrs B will be complaining about the solar smell. Never mind. She should be used to it by now. <laughs> right, so that's D2. Let's get D1 in. Stripe towards the left. 
I love this board, it's a really tidy motherboard, little board to work with. I hope it will work first time too, should be a bonus. Let's trim that. Built quite a few boards this year, we built a test cartridge for the Commodore 64, power supply for the Commodore 64. Uh, oh, the Harlequin, yeah, that was a big build. A video of that build is on my YouTube channel. I enjoyed that. And it worked first time, well almost first time. Watched the video to find out what went wrong. It was nothing major thankfully. Just uh, a little bit of confusion with the instructions. You're using a particular ROM type. So there we go. Let's cut that. Just double check with Mrs. B, it looks like Strictly's finished, it's uh, 10 past 8, it's running a bit late. So uh, I'm going to finish off now, for the moment, I'll pick this up tomorrow, uh, hopefully finish it off, get it tested. But yeah, so far, so good, I think I've got, broke the back of this project. Hmm. About to do some more soldering on this board. So where are we up to now then? It's been an eventful day at work, I didn't get a chance to do any of the lunch hour. And discovered that they've got a leaky pipe in the ceiling, which is always fun. Uh, okay, where are we up to? Diodes. Okay, sold of the two diodes, step five. So it's a 7660 chip we've got to put in place next, which I believe is this fella here. I'll just get my magnifying headset. There we go. Got a fine chance of seeing the uh, chip marking. So this is, I believe, the 7660. Right. That's, uh, we'll invert. Is it 5 volts to minus 5 volts? Or five? Minus 5 volts to 5 volts. Just look that up. Ah, I've just checked the data sheet. The 7660 converts a positive voltage from uh, 1.5 volts to 10 volts to a negative voltage. So I assume this is for the minus 5 volt rail. Uh, I'm going to actually solder this in via a socket, because I like sockets. So I'm going to put the socket in first. Let's uh, get that tacked on with my old friend, Mr. Blue Tack. It's just one less thing to desolder if it goes wrong, isn't it? So let's just tack that in place. Blue Tack is a wonderful invention. There we go. I'll do the usual top left, bottom right. So I get my solder. I was reviewing my video clips from earlier, and you've got lots of shots of my hair as I'm soldering things. I'll try and keep them out of the way this time. So let's uh, tin my soldering iron first. Clean and tin. Look at that. I should be up to temperature now. Soon find out. Not quite. There we go. Wasn't enough solder on the soldering out there, I don't think. Yeah. 
perfect. So by doing the top left and the bottom right, uh, I can make sure that the socket is straight. And it's okay. So what I can do now is just get the soldering iron, push the socket in my finger, reflow the solder. Uh, how's that one? Now that's nice and straight now. Perfect. I've even mounted it the right way with a notch pointing that way. Good, good, good. Let's put the rest of the solder on. Uh, doing a little bit of reading about the 4116 chips and why they need so many voltages this lunchtime. Uh, apparently it's all to do with the substrate. So for high speed chips, I mean we're talking you know high speed back in the day, it's advantageous to put a minus volt, 5 volts on the substrate. Uh, which is the bit the transistors are built up on the chip and no expert. That's perfect, there we go. I can put the chip in last then. And uh, I think the chips run off 12 volts internally and the 5 volts is just used for the um, data lines. In liter chips, they actually generate the minus 5 volts or the substrate bias voltage and the 12 volts internally um, but on these earlier chips it's all we've dealt with external of course there's an advantage of doing it internally you get two pins back which is what you find on 4164s and so on you get more pins to play with for data and address lines and chip selects and so on and so forth okay so we've done that or at least we put the socket in uh, what's next? Soldering the remaining yellow ceramic capacitor. So let's get that fella out. Here somewhere. There we are. And where does that go? That goes here. Eventually. I keep the uh, cutoffs component legs quite handy for when you're doing Vero board stuff. A bit of damage on the circuit board. Hope oh, that's not. I'll check continuity on that in a bit. Sure, it's fine. Uh, yeah, let's get this soldered in. What was I saying now? Uh, yeah, component legs, Vero board. Just handy for bridging things. There we go. On that. And uh, what's next? That will be the remaining power doohickey for this fella. And that's the 78L12, which it is. Let's bend the legs. There we are. And that goes the same way as the other one. The flat side towards the left of the PCB, we can see it here anyway, can't you? So there we go. 
Let's push that in. About the same height as the other one. I think this one will just solder now rather than cutting the pins. It's in a good position. Straighten it up a bit. There we go. Perfect. Let's get those pins cut. Actually, I don't quite like that solder joint on that side there. Just reflow that. There we go. That's what this tin is here for. Just full of component legs and dodgy capacitors I've taken out of spectrums. <laughs> there we go. So that's that done. Looking alright, that. What's next? Solder the LED lights in place. Last 10 UF capacitor. Oh, I've missed a couple of capacitors out here. Last 2 UF capacitor C1. Let's get that further in then. So that will be negative upwards. Judging from his circuit board. Yup. There we go. The C one, wasn't it? Yep. Perfect. Uh, so I did say I was going to check the continuity on that trap that looked a bit dodgy, didn't I? Which is, there's a kind of a weird mark there. I'm sure it's fine, it looks fine. Let's just check that now. We'll go any further. Get my meter out. Do, do, do. Looking things over here. So meter on continuity test. We should have continuity between this pin here and which one was it then? Was that track there, wasn't it?
Yeah, that's fine. Good, good, good. Always worth checking. Get the meter away for another day. Just cosmetic mark on the motherboard more than anything. Not that we worry about such things, and it works. It's quite a chunky motherboard, I suspect it doesn't go quite deep in order to break the track on there. Uh, so, last 10 UF capacitor. We've done that. Uh, small black capacitor. Did see that earlier. Oh, there it is. So that goes and that will be negative up to before to testing this actually it'll save me a bit of time. that done all the capacitors are in place in the right way uh, LEDs next not got many, much more to do really to be honest long legs towards the right so we want fail to be red long legs towards the right <laughs> so, so fail is red that seems like a good naming convention, doesn't it? Fairly red. There we go. LEDs are, of course, polarised, as you well know. That's red. <sighs> bit cockeyed, just bend that a little bit. There we go. Perfect. There we go, we're perfect again. Ah. And we'll have blue for success. The blue LED of success. Long legs towards the right. Does that look? That was pretty straight, I think. Oh, yeah. A little bit of a bend there, maybe, of the red one. Happy with that. It's straight enough. Uh. Let's get the barrel jack in. In fact, here he's actually saying use blue tag. So a man after my own heart. Could use sellotape, but I prefer blue tag. 
I'm just going to tack it in so we can get this pretty level. I think that's it. Put plenty of solder on this. The trick is to put plenty of solder on and let it flow. Let it flow, is that right? So don't spare the solder. Perfect. Let's see how straight that is. Oh, that's pretty good. Good with that. Not that I'm a perfectionist or anything. You can see I'll put plenty of solder on there. Flowing all the way around that pad. So let's do the others now. See what I'm doing. There we go. This is going to be carrying the 9 volts and the power supply. Uh, let's make it count. I need a bit more solder on that wheel. Uh, a bit more on that side. Actually, that's probably okay. Yeah, no, a bit more on that side. Happy with that. You can have them putting off the SMDs. I really do hate them. I so it's not up to it anymore. Let's do these SMDs first. Well, there we go. That's looking pretty smart, isn't it? Next, before I put off, put the uh, surface mounts in. It's the switches, isn't it? These will only go in one way anyway. My experience. Legs are bent. Is this one bent? No, there we go. That's going in. We come to that thing. I think they'll just grip in. I won't need to put any blue tack on those. There we go. Good. Let's have a look at that. Looking good, looking good. That is almost done. Oh, I just need to pop that chip in, didn't I? I'll do that last. I mustn't forget, otherwise it won't work. Won't it? And trim those pins at some point. SMD, right. 
It's these fellas here, isn't it? Oh, heck. Alright. Okay, so let's get these out of the packet. It's a bit fiddly, this. There's a better way to do this. Right. Get my tweezers. See how tiny those are. And you can see that. I don't want to lose this, I've not got any spares. See how tidy it is? Like a grain of rice. So the way we're going to do this is as follows. Get that the right way around first. Dope. There we go. Now I'm going to apply a blob of solder to one of the pads. So let's clean my soldier line tip first. So I'm just going to apply a tiny blob of solder to one of the pads. Like so. Probably a bit too much there. Now it'll do. And then what you do is you move around. You get the resistor in your tweezers located on the board. Like so. Not the solder. Push it on like that. Let's straighten it up a bit. There. So look at that. One side done. And then you just put a blob of solder on the other side. So let's do that now. Like so, and they can tidy it up. So let's just tidy this side up. That's one done. It really is that easy, nothing to be afraid about. go right I'm gonna stop fiddly with that now I think put my soldering wire carefully so not get the wire hot job is a good one we have all of the components soldered on oh, just got one remaining thing to do you push the chip in remember the notch goes to the left just bend the pins a little bit oh. This one's obviously got slightly bent in transit. Never mind. It will be fine. Everything will be fine. Push it in the socket. Whee! Come to die. There we go. Sweet. <sighs> so the next step is to test it. I'll do that in the next video. Put it through its paces, make sure it's working. I hope you enjoyed the assembly. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, then please subscribe to my channel. I will catch you in the next video. Goodbye.